Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm answering question number five from the International A Level Pure Mathematics P3, January 2022 paper. Um, it says Figure one shows a sketch of part of the curve with the equation y equals 6 lin 2x plus 3 minus a half x squared plus 4, and x is greater than or equal to negative 2, no, greater than negative 3 over 2, sorry. The curve cuts the negative x axis at the point P, as shown in figure 1. Show that the x coordinate of P lies in this interval, somewhere between minus 1.25 and minus 1.2. That means minus 1.25 is this side of P, and 1 point, minus 1.2 is on that side of P. Somewhere in that interval it lies. Okay, so how do we show that... Um, uh, a root, this is the root, a root is where the curve co crosses the x-axis, is between two values. Okay, we, we do this by what's called change of sign, the rule of change of sign. So basically, first of all, I'm going to rewrite this as f of x equals 6 lin 2x plus 3 minus a half x squared plus 4. And then I'm going to write this, well, we know that on the x-axis, on the x-axis, y is equal to 0, so f of x is equal to 0. So we know that basically, um, if I substitute f of negative 1.25 in here, it's going to give me, it's going to be a value, okay, which is going to give me something that's less than 0. Okay, because you can see when um, x is on this side of the root, on to the left of the root, the curve is below the x-axis. And when the curve is to the other side of the root, where x is minus 1.2, if it's on this side of, of the root, then it's going to be having giving you a positive value. So if I can see that, if I can see that, like if we just kind of like zoom in a bit, supposing this is the root and this is minus 1.25 and this is minus 1.2, if that's the root, then we can see that when you put minus 1.25 inside this function, you should get come out with a negative value, and you put negative 1.2 inside the function, you should get a positive value because you know on before the root, the root is where it crosses the x-axis. So be, before the root, in this particular case, it's going to be below the x-axis, and after the root, it's going to be above it. Okay, so if I substitute, let me put this over here, so. I have more space. If I substitute this into this function, negative 1.25, I'm pretty sure it's going to give you a negative value. So let's see what happens. 6 times the lin of 2 times negative 1.25 plus 3 minus a half times negative 1.25 squared plus 4. That should give me a negative value. And when I put 1.2 inside this function, that's going to give me a positive value because on that side of the root, it's going to be positive. And this is on, it's saying it's in that interval, so it's going to be in that side of the root. So 6 times the lin of 2 times negative 1.2, close that bracket, plus 3, minus a half times negative 1.2 squared, plus 4. So let's see what happens when we do this. Okay, so we're going to put this in here. 6 times the lin, open bracket, 2 times, I'll put um, open bracket, 6 times the lin, the bracket's already there by the way, so 2 times, open the bracket, negative 1.25, close the bracket, plus 3, close that bracket for the lin, minus a half, which is, I'll just write it like this, a half times, so I'll put another bracket, negative 1.25 squared, plus 4, now that should give us a negative value according to the way the graph looks, and it does. Negative 0 0.9401. Negative 0 0.9401. Okay, that's what it... Yep, okay. And when I put f 1.2 in here, okay, it should give me a positive value because that's to the right of the root. So let's have a look. Let me change that by just subtracting this. 5 from there, that's minus 1.2, and over here as well, the same thing, minus 1.2, equals, C is positive, that's as we suspected, 0 0.2150, 0 0.2150, so we can see here, now, we should write down a statement here, that 
as in the interval, and we can write down the interval as they gave it to us, minus 1.25 and minus 1.2, there is a change of sign. They're looking for this phrase, change of sign. And also you can mention if you want to, and you know this is a continuous function, it's not a broken function, it's not any asymptote there or anything, it's a continuous function. Therefore, a root must lie in this interval. Something like that. Statement like that, they're looking for the words change of sign. Therefore, a root lies in the interval. So you have to show that one is positive and one is negative. Okay. And of course, we can see from the graph that the, the, graph that the first one is going to be the negative one, the second one is going to be positive. Um, you have to show, you have to mention that because there is a change, in si change of sign in this interval, okay, for when you, put F when you substitute fx into there, you end up with um, a root lying between those values. So that's the answer for 5 part A. Now moving on to 5 part B. It says the curve cuts the positive x-axis at the point Q, Okay, as show, also shown in figure 1. Okay, so there's another place where the curve cross, crosses the x-axis, that's at Q. It says, um, so B part 1, it says, using the iterative formula, xn plus 1 equals the square root of 12 times lin, bracket 2xn plus 3 plus 8, okay, with x1 equals 6. This, this formula has been derived from just rearranging the original formula that we had. Well, anyway, we couldn't, didn't ask us to do, do that in this particular question. But B part 1 says find to four decimal places the value of x2. So what you need to do is to say x2 is equal to the square root of, you should show this step, 12 times the lin of 2 times x1, which is 6, plus 3, close the bracket, and plus 8. So we need to show that step here that you've put instead of, uh, xn, you put x1, which is 6. All right, so we're going to find out what that gives us. So you have the square root of 12 times the lin of 2 times 6 plus 3. Whoops, 2 times 6 plus 3, close that bracket. Okay, that's going to be 15 um, plus 8. All of that under the square root, and that gives me 6.363694 6.363694 give your answer to four decimal places so you have 6.3637 okay now part two says find by continued iteration the x coordinate of q All right when it says by continued iteration what it means is we have to uh, substitute these values back into here again so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put x to find x3 i'm going to put 12 times the lin of 2 times x2 plus 3 plus 8 that's what i'm going to do I'll put that value into here and then we're going to continue it now the way to do that in your calculator is actually quite a clever method you could use what i'm going to do is i'm going to start off with this first value that we want to start with which is 6. I'll press 6 and I'll press equals. That's now the answer in my calculator. That is now the answer in the calculator. To make this easy, instead of keeping keep on having to substitute values into these expressions every time, to make life easier for yourself, yeah, once you've done that, I'll press 6 then answer. That's now answer in my calculator. What I can do is I can set this up and instead of xn, I'll write answer. So I'll have square root of 12, then I'll have lin, bracket, then I'm going to put 2 times the answer, 2x, two, 2 times the answer, that means 2 times 6, okay, plus 3, close the bracket, and then plus 8. Now doing that is going to take the answer that's in my calculator, which is 6, and it's going to give me the same answer that we got here, which is 6.367 to 4 decimal places, it'll give me exactly the same answer as, as we got before, okay, which we can see exactly it's the same answer. Okay, um, 6.3637 to four decimal places. Now, when I press equals again, it's going to take this answer 
and put it in the place where it says answer. So instead of having me having to type this all out again with this new value, just by pressing equals again, I'm going to get x3, the next value, which is 6.408185. 6 6.408185. 6.408185. Da, da, da. Goes on like that. Four decimal places. Okay, I'm going to have 6.4082. Now, what I can do now, I don't think we have to write them all down. So I'm just going to write down, I'm going to just press equals. Now this is going to put this back in here. So by continued iteration, I think just they, they will just want you to put at least one of the values in, not show all of them. Now, if you want to, you can. So, I mean, I could put x4 equals and write the value down if you want to be sure to show yourself. So I'll press equals again. That's going to be x4. 6.4135 so i can write it down if i want to 6.4135 and x5 if i put x5 down by pressing equals again 6 1 6.4141 6.4141 we want to give the answer to four decimal places as we said so i'm going to keep going until four decimal places settles i press equals again it says 6.4142 Okay, so x6 is 6, 6.4142. All right, and I keep going. I press equals again. That'll be 6.4142. That's x7. 6.4142. It looks like it's setting up 42 here. Press equals again. 6.4142. It looks like it's going to settle there. Yeah. To two, four decimal places. You're going to 6.4142, 6 so we can say that the, um, the x coordinate of q, okay, is 6.4142. Okay, so you can say the x coordinate of q is 6.4142 to four decimal places, and that's found by iteration. Okay, so there's your answer to B part 2. Okay, so this is how you deal with iteration. Okay, that little technique of putting the answer um, in your calculator using the answer button really helps us to do this. Um, and there we have the answer to part two. That's question 5B, part one and two done. Now we're going to go to B, part um, C. Now five, sorry, question 5C. Now 5C is about differentiation, basically. So I'm going to save this in a different video. So I'll leave question A and B. A and B are to do with um, um, numerical methods and iteration. So I'll save that under that um, playlist for that particular topic. Um, part C, I'm going to save under differentiation from P3. And I will save, um, I'll have the other questions, including part C, in this playlist here from this paper, January 2022. And the other questions, as I said, the playlist for um, iteration and numerical methods will be in this and playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.